Uh, first of all, let me thank you for inviting me here because uh, uh, Prague is a particularly significant uh, uh, place for Alice. I mean, uh, this is uh, one of the centers of our collaborations since a long time. And uh, so I'm particularly pleased to be part of these celebrations for 20 years uh, of, uh, of uh, uh, Czech Republic at CERN. I mean, uh, it's, uh, it's 20 years also that they are, they are in, uh, in, uh, in Alice. So. <laughs> I, uh, it's, it's a lot of memories to us. So I will just uh, tell you a bit about the, uh, the physics uh, uh, of the very, very few slides of introduction, but then I will show you some of uh, the results that we are obtaining. I actually, I have the pleasure to have show you, share with you some of the very first results obtained in the proton nucleus run, which just took place. Uh, we had a very, very short run of a few hours uh, that was meant as a pilot run, and that I will show you some results from that. So uh, this is actually a, the, the first. Well, this is. Does it mean that it, we don't have the animations? Huh? I ah, know. So, so, so <laughs> sorry, but uh, the somehow it jumped to the. Yeah. What does it? So uh, I hope it will not be like. Let me try if I do it it's here. No. Lose the animations. Hmm. Okay, I hope, I hope I don't have too many, because uh, I, uh, so I will have to go back this way. <laughs> uh, so this, the, the LHC is really an amazing machine, because uh, uh, as you know, it is able to, it has been meant to accelerate uh, protons, the hadrons, but uh, it, uh, it does a lot more. It uh, accelerates ions, and that's what we, is our uh, main business. Uh, but since uh, this year, it accelerates uh, protons and ions at the same time, which is uh, a highly non-trivial thing because the machine has uh, uh, one magnetic system. So if you run protons and nuclei at the same time, you have different energy for the two beams. And to uh, synchronize uh, two e beams that are at different energies uh, so that they will collide uh, regularly at every orbit in the same place uh, is a highly non-trivial game. And it's actually the first time it's ever done. And, uh, and finally, uh, there's a, a nice uh, uh, photon nucleus uh, uh, collisions that you get because when you cross uh, two nuclei at high energy, each nucleus sees the other nucleus as a beam of photons uh, of, of high energy, actually, at, this, at these energies. And, uh, for example, and you get beautiful events like this one, in which uh, uh, this is actually a nucleus-nucleus collision at a very high energy, but in which uh, uh, there is a photonuclear production of uh, a uh, nupsilon. This is a, a nupsilon decaying in two tracks, and you see that there's nothing at all apart from, apart from this, uh, this. And this is the first uh, uh, the, uh, proton nucleus collisions of just a month ago. The, so, I mean, uh, w w our uh, game is, uh, is, uh, is QCD. QCD is, uh, is a very successful theory which describes very well strong interactions, but well, there are a few puzzles which is, are the parts which interest us. Uh, one is confinement. I will go very, very quickly through these things. It's, it's meant more for the general public here, are all scientists, so I didn't know who would be at the, at the meeting. Uh, so the, the, the fact that the quark, the force between quarks in, grows with distance, that's so that you cannot isolate them, but at the same time, this is then the trick that you, that, uh, that you want to do to, uh, since the force grows with distance, then you will compress many uh, quarks uh, uh, one near the other, and uh, in that way you will have local freedom, in, uh, for, uh, and you want to have many of them so that you can actually study the properties of that as a system, and we will see in a second. That, that uh, takes you to a study, you, you've seen before that this is the region which is studied by our friends uh, in, in Atlas, uh, to a region in which uh, you, uh, the, the universe went from this uh, uh, soup of quarks and gluons to the uh, formation of the hadrons. And uh, it is very important, this, because it's a fundamental uh, phase transition which is observable in the laboratory. Uh, unlike others in which you can really study these uh, systems. So here, at this, at this point, you can talk about temperatures, which you cannot easily talk about in, in elementary, in elementary uh, systems, because uh, the, the definition of the temperature also requires a transfer of information over a certain volume. 
and uh, also because many fe features uh, of, uh, of the universe were established in, in these phases, in these times. The other thing which is interesting is the fact that uh, the uh, atom mass, uh, the, the, which is actually the mass of everything you have around, the mass of what you have around is due to the mass of the nucleons, because of the mass of the nuclei, and uh, this is actually uh, for uh, the vast majority generated dynamically by the interaction between the quarks rather than by the, their quark masses, which only represent 1%. And so it is very important uh, to, for the understanding of, the, of again, of, the, of, of how uh, the mass is acquired to understand how this, the confinement and uh, chiral symmetry uh, works. So this uh, is a long story. In fact, uh, from the very moment in which uh, uh, the uh, theory of, of strong interactions, uh, QCD, was established, uh, there immediately people realized that uh, there one could reinterpret the so-called Hagedorn temperature, which was a critical temperature derived from the mass spectrum of the hadronic states, in fact, as a, a uh, temperature at which one would have a transition to a different phase of, uh, of, of matter. And you can find in a, in a 1975 uh, paper by Khabib and Parisi, the very first uh, of these uh, uh, phase diagrams with, in which temperature and baryonic density are used as the two axes uh, to describe uh, the strongly interacting matter. And uh, now it's, uh, the, the, the plot has become much more complex, uh, but even more than that, it's uh, been populated with measured points. And that uh, is, uh, is been one of the successes of the, of the work uh, done by experimentalists uh, over the last uh, two decades uh, of, of heavy ion physics, uh, that is to uh, populate the uh, phase diagram of, uh, of uh, strong interacting matter of actually measured point. So how does one study uh, whips, sorry, these uh, phenomena. One that studies them by, and this is again an, an old story, T.D. Lee suggested it already in 1975, uh, that the way to study these phenomena is by uh, using uh, large system, complex systems, and collide them rather than elementary ones. And uh, this has been then followed as a as an experimental program uh, throughout two decades, first uh, at the AGS and uh, at the SPS at CERN, and already uh, many of you uh, uh, were uh, uh, participating in that program, so it was already a Prague presence in heavy ions at the SPS program, and this was very important. And this was a, a, the beginning of somehow the involvement uh, of the uh, Czech scientists uh, in, in this field. And then uh, uh, TRIC, where again we have a presence of, of Czech scientists, and then uh, finally at the, at the LHC. And <coughs> it is clear that to study this type of system, you always have a difficulty in turning backwards. Uh, you, you want to really study system properties, and uh, this is a nice analogy that Jürgen Schokraft has worked out recently, and that I copied for this. Uh, it's clear that when you study water, uh, it's not by studying a single molecule and using QAED that you're going to know any of the properties of water. Uh, you, you actually have to study a, a, a bucket of water in order to, to establish any of the uh, properties, like the, the, its phases uh, the, the, uh, and the, proper, the, the transport properties and so on. So uh, it's, it's similarly, so we want to have a bucket of nuclear matter uh, at, uh, at high density. And, uh, the question which uh, was asked all along from the very beginning of this program is, but come on, you are colliding uh, two nuclei, that's most of you can do. Uh, it's not going to be that many, these particles. Can you really define uh, collective properties like viscosity or transport properties? Can you define the temperature? And uh, indeed, the answer is yes. Although it is not very large, it's, a, it's a, a relatively small reticle of some 30 times 30 times 30 uh, elements, indeed uh, you can define uh, 
global properties, you can measure them. And uh, in fact, uh, this uh, is a, a recent example of measurements in which was by measuring uh, flow patterns, I mean the, the waves uh, formed in the, in the system, you can measure on, for a single event, the, actually the shape of, of the single event. This is two single events. Of course, these are uh, the, with, with taken extreme events of a, of a well-defined shape. You will have many events which have intermediate uh, uh, mixed shapes, but you can have events like these which have well-defined uh, patterns. And now, uh, one of the things that people have learned to do is to start studying properties, other properties, versus the directions of the, the privileged directions of the, of the uh, shape of the system. Uh, there are also rigorous ways to, to, to treat these, uh, these, uh, these uh, systems, and one is from Lattice QCD, which has been the historic uh, vehicle uh, for uh, uh, predictions from, uh, uh, of measurable quantities from uh, uh, QCD. There are more recent, uh, more uh, uh, exotic uh, ways in which going from, from for example, uh, uh, superstrings that has, has been developed via the ADSFT correspondence, but this has been the historic reference. And uh, there, uh, there's two points, one that uh, are important, one that uh, there is a phase transition, and the other is that uh, the chiral uh, phase transition, the, uh, with the, you see like the uh, dropping of the masses of the, of the quarks, uh, and uh, the, the confinement transition seem to happen at the same temperature of about 170 uh, MeV. And how, that's, that's very hot, yes. The, how, how hot that is, I mean, if you, if you think of it, this is, uh, these are uh, temperatures uh, or that one can, one can measure. Uh, you can go from 10 to the 7 Kelvin of the center of the sun to the 10 to the 8 of a, of a uh, fusion reactor, 10 to the 11 around, uh, these have become more speculative numbers uh, in, in a supernova. And uh, these are, uh, and the temperatures which we just measured, I will show you the, the numbers uh, uh, in, uh, in Alice are of the order of 5, 10 to the 12. Now, uh, the LHC, as, so, as I said, has worked uh, beautifully as, a, as an accelerator of nuclei. Uh, in particular, you, you've seen uh, the enormous luminosities these are uh, obtained with proton-proton. These are much smaller, but yet, on the scale of nuclear collisions, these are enormous anyway. Not only, but as show, as usual, the wizardry of our accelerator uh, colleagues that have uh, been able to provide uh, uh, 10 times uh, the luminosity uh, of 2010 in 2011. And the amazing thing has been the, when the machine has to be switched from uh, accelerating protons to accelerating nuclei, it took three days, which uh, for a completely different system is, is, is really uh, fantastic. <clears throat> there are uh, different experiments looking at, uh, at the heavy ions at LAC. Uh, by design, ALICE was the only experiment designed for heavy ion collisions, and therefore at the time when we were working on the design of the experiment, with the, was the idea that it had to be comprehensive uh, and a measure of essentially all uh, important variables. And uh, one of the key uh, design features was the fact of having a very robust tracking. Actually, at the time, uh, the forecast of the, the multiplicities that one would observe at the LAC was much larger than what actually has been measured. So people were extremely worried about uh, the feasibility of tracking at all. So the whole point, the, the central part of the experiment is a, is a large TPC, which has 560 million pixels. Uh, remember that that is what you see in these pictures. What these are the tracks in the TPC, and you see that they are, if you would zoom in, you would see that they are very, very well separated, because even though you have thousands of tracks, since you have 560 million pixels, and that gives you well, over 100 points per track, uh, track finding is not a problem at all. It's actually, uh, that's, that's the easy part. Whoops. So what you, what you uh, and then, whoops, please keep going. Uh, what, so you have this very robust tracking, and you have a, a very good tracking at very low transverse momentum, and that uh, is based uh, on the fact of having a low field in, the, in your uh, magnet, but uh, also and especially to have a very, very low material budget. Uh, consider that we have a, a less than 10% 
of radiation lengths uh, within a radius of uh, 2.5 meters. So it's very, very, very low. And that is the, what allows you to work uh, down to, to uh, the, the 100 MeV uh, transverse moment. And then the other main characteristic is to have particle identification of a large PT range using all sorts of different technologies, actually. I, I given courses on particle identification using only alias detectors as examples because we do essentially everything. Uh, in, uh, in, with time, it has been realized that uh, Atlas and CMS uh, would have an, an interest also, and they actually developed some very, very strong uh, avion communities, of which we are extremely happy, because that has enriched uh, enormously the, the field uh, at the LHC. And in particular, there they can play with on their excellent calorimetry to jet studies and the excellent dilepton measurements, especially at, at high at high transverse momentum, and so that it creates a picture which is very nicely complementary. There is a, at, uh, at conferences now, there is always a, a, a rich debate between the results of the different experiments which cover different regions of the observables. So this is, this is Alice, so I told you there is a, this very large uh, magnet of uh, uh, very uniform, then there is an inner tracking system, and here I start with uh, the uh, first, uh, first uh, flag of, of the Czech Republic, that, uh, because uh, there's been a, a major contribution from uh, institutes here in Prague to uh, the, the, drift detect the silicon drift detectors. And uh, then we have the TPC, which is this main tracking device, uh, particle identification detectors, and then uh, the uh, FOSS, which is uh, a, uh, a, a very nice uh, a high uh, granularity, uh, high resolution uh, calorimeter using the same type of crystals uh, that CMS uses, by the way, which were developed in Alice first. <laughs> uh, they, made, they bought many more than we did, <laughs> but uh, the, uh, they were actually developed in Alice. Uh, and where uh, there's been is the other uh, important contribution from, from the Czech Republic. And then there is a forward uh, uh, muon spectrometer and uh, a number of, of trigger detectors. So this is the collaboration as it is now. Uh, now we, are, uh, we reached uh, 35 countries and uh, 132 institutes. There's been 12 new institutes this year. Uh, so the, the, the collaboration is growing uh, rapidly now, uh, especially because uh, of the involvement uh, on, on the upgrade program. And uh, it, this, it has been a long history, as I was saying. We started in the, in the early 90s uh, with the design and for the, a decade uh, of, of R&D. And I must remember that there was a strong involvement uh, at the, in this phase already, both on the development of uh, the silicon detectors and on the development of uh, the, uh, the FOSS already at, uh, at, that, uh, at that time. It's a, it's a long history of collaboration. And uh, then construction, commissioning, and finally data taking. But uh, it's, uh, the experiment's a live thing. And so all along this period, there's been uh, uh, continuous updates and improvements. Uh, we approved in 1996 the construction of the new spectrometer, three years later of the transition radiation detector, uh, only six years ago the uh, logmagnetic calorimeter, which has been complemented, approved uh, in 2010 construction, uh, com will be completed next year by a, a sec second uh, calorimeter on the opposite side. And uh, just uh, now, uh, in September, the LACC has endorsed our proposal to uh, continue with uh, uh, an upgrade of the detector that will go over, uh, over the next uh, several years. So there are three Czech insti uh, institutions, you see them up here, uh, and they are, have a total of 28 members, and uh, as I said, it's important for us to remember that they are among the uh, founding fathers uh, of, the, of the experiment. And uh, w so this is how Alice was in 2001, and this was the construction and the completion of the construction. And uh, w this is the uh, activity of one of the groups, 
in, in Alice, the, the, the group which is working in, in the, in the uh, photon spectrometer. Then you see here the cradle, for example, which is a mechanical structure in which the whole system is, sits, which has been built here. And uh, the, the modules, were, while, while they were being tested and, and uh, optimized, and they, there's been, as I said, a participation all along uh, from the conception and the design and the development of the technologies uh, together with uh, especially uh, the Russian colleagues. And this is a very important measurement that we will see that uh, because of the, the photons uh, access at the early phases of the collision, so this is a, a very important measurement. The other group, uh, we spread over two of the institutes here, uh, has uh, participated in the, in, the, in the tracking system. And again here, there's been some uh, really direct uh, hardware developments done here. Uh, the, uh, voltage supply the, that uh, had to be developed specifically for this because remember silicon drift detectors uh, uh, contrary to silicon strips uh, a drift as the name says uh, the charge through the uh, all along the the silicon and then collect it at the end like a, like in a in a drift chambers uh, in the gas drift chambers and then you reconstruct the position of the charge through sampling of uh, in in time this means that your signals that you get are much much smaller than the signal you will get in the microstrip detectors so therefore the uh, accuracy of your power of your electronics and therefore of the power supplies that, that uh, power it has to be much uh, better controlled than for silicon strips and so this was one of the important developments and it was developed to by uh, one of the uh, groups here in Prague together with uh, with the Czech uh, uh, industry and uh, uh, also all the uh, control systems that sit uh, on, I don't have a photo of the control systems, and on the, on the detector, they sit, sit uh, directly near, next to the detector, have been developed uh, by uh, the uh, Czech colleagues, which of course could still continue to maintain them and, uh, and, uh, uh, commission and continue to, to uh, look at them. But uh, it's important, <laughs> uh, you've seen, it's beautiful to have so many points per track and so many, uh, and, and uh, it's interesting to have so many tracks, but that means that you have a lot of data. Uh, while ALICE is significantly smaller as a collaboration and Atlas or CMS, so the amount of data produced <laughs> is <laughs> very close. So we, our uh, uh, Computing issues are, are really major, and which, of course, the, are solved as for other experiment, the other experiments by spreading computing all over the world, and in particular in in Prague, which is one of our nodes, which actually uh, provides uh, to Alice uh, significantly more than would be the the actual share that <coughs> the Czech Republic should be about two percent. The, the uh, share that the Czech Republic should provide, and it actually provides about uh, twice as much, which is which is very nice. And it's also very nice, I find, the fact that uh, there is uh, uh, they have uh, this uh, friendly approach in which the, uh, they have developed a, a common computer center that serves uh, uh, Atlas, uh, Alice, and other uh, and other uh, uh, projects uh, in in a very flexible way. Therefore, uh, reusing you know all the other heads uh, of, uh, <coughs> of uh, 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 maintenance and so on. And uh, uh, this is a very important factor that there is a, a, a very uh, effective and, uh, and practical uh, way of collaboration between the groups, from, from, especially from Atlas and, uh, and Alice here. So it's nice that we are all here to, to celebrate the long-standing participation at CERN, but it's also good to see that locally people have a, a very uh, strong collaborative attitude. And, uh, and this is seen in a very physical way in this, uh, in this computer center, which works very well. And these are the current numbers. And uh, it is important to uh, remind that uh, this is very efficient, not only because it's well maintained and so on and so forth, but also because it's a very well connected to the to the rest. There's ex excellent uh, connectivity to 
to uh, other uh, other uh, uh, nodes, and this has been a major factor of uh, to have a very strong impact uh, on the analysis. And you see here the, the jobs running uh, steadily uh, over time in in this uh, center that you see here in the in the Alice Pie. And uh, so Alice works well. Uh, as I said before, one of the strong points of the experiment was particle identification. And this is just a summary of uh, uh, some particle identification techniques. This is uh, uh, the energy loss in the inner tracking system, uh, which, by the way, relies heavily on the, uh, on the uh, accuracy of the calibration of uh, the uh, response uh, of the detectors that has to that has a time dependence and therefore it has to be continuously uh, monitored and in fact uh, this is again a uh, part which is a responsibility of the of the track groups the the uh, con continuous uh, calibration of the uh, of the response uh, to charge loss of the of the inner tracking system in Alice. Uh, time of flight, uh, the, the energy loss in the TPC, in the TRD, uh, the, the TRD response, and, uh, and the, this is the, our, our uh, uh, Cherenkov, and this uh, is the, the vertex in which, of course, benefits not only of the very high accuracy of the detectors, but also of the very low material that we have in the system. In the, in the very low material can be seen here. Here is uh, the tomography that you can do of the experiment by using photon conversions in the, in the material and then reconstructing them in the, in the, in the TPC. And you can get all the vertices of your, of your uh, photons and then you uh, compare with your uh, Monte Carlo. In the beginning, of course, uh, the things are not so good and then you go and look for all the things you have forgotten and so on and you arrive at the end and having a, an, up, an extremely accurate uh, description of your material in, in the system. And we will see that that has a, an impact also on some of the physics results that you can obtain. Uh, of course, the, our physics program has a, has a core business as, as our uh, uh, lead, lead measurements, but uh, it's uh, very important uh, uh, that we also collect uh, comparison data in proton-proton and work on some uh, specific uh, QCD uh, measurements. You can see a, a, a small summary here of some recent measurements. Uh, this is, for example, it was the first measurement of the polarization in the JSI production at the LEC. This is uh, the uh, variation of the yield of, of JSI as a function of charge multiplicity, uh, which uh, uh, has a very different uh, uh, behavior uh, as in the Monte Carlos, and so this has triggered some studies. Uh, and uh, the the one for the uh, uh, charmed mesons uh, is upcoming, and which was suggested by Michelangelo in the audience, is uh, is actually finished now. The analysis, so it, you will see it in a, <laughs> within a month or two. Uh, so uh, we always listen carefully to suggestions from Michelangelo because they are generally very much to the point. So this this has been now done uh, with, uh, with for the this. This was uh, just a, it's an old measurement at this point. It's already uh, two years old, but it was just to show you how important it was to understand your, uh, the, the, the material distribution. This is the um, uh, measurement of the uh, anti-proton to proton ratio the, the, uh, in, the, in the central region, which uh, at the LHC you would expect to be uh, close to one, in the sense that you have no residual uh, barrier number in the central, in the central region. And that, so that there are no uh, diagrams in, in your collision that would bring uh, baryons uh, from the uh, forward region to the, to the central one. And uh, in, in principle, it's easy. You have your particle identification. You measure very well the, the protons. You measure very well the antiprotons. You do a ratio, and, and you are not done because the uh, Cross sections of uh, protons and antiprotons is, is very different uh, in, uh, with the material. So, you, in order to get to a precision which would make this uh, measurement uh, significant, uh, which means uh, to better than one percent, you have to know your the material. <coughs> 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 
and the transport properties of protons and antiprotons uh, uh, to uh, the same precision. And that's why it was one of the reasons to have those very detailed studies of the, of the materials. Uh, similarly, we have done, uh, since we have a very wide coverage in rapidity for uh, measurements of, of single particles, there, there's been uh, nice measurements of the cross-section uh, for diffractive, uh, single diffractive, double diffractive, and inelastic, which has just come out. Um, and then we, of course, have a whole field of study which uh, is linked to the fact that that uh, uh, you wonder whether, uh, in pro if you take proton-proton collisions of very high multiplicity, uh, they would start exhibiting some of the, of the features that we tend to attribute to the collectivity in the system when uh, you, uh, start, we study uh, heavy ion collisions. And uh, uh, these, for example, are uh, uh, measurements of, uh, of interferometry. And you can, by the way, see that finally, uh, in proton-proton collisions at the LHC, you start having multiplicity densities in, in, in rapidity, which are approaching the ones the, the actually overlapping with the measurements at least uh, at, uh, taken at RIC. But you can see that at the, mom at the moment, at least, uh, the, the two, for example, for this specific measurement, which is uh, the, the, are the radii in, uh, in interferometry, the two curves uh, don't, don't come together. And similarly, okay, we'll just not go into this. But this is a, a nice plot that shows you really the same, the, what I was saying about the complementarity uh, with Atlas. Uh, he, this is a measurement of uh, for heavy flavors, uh, and you can see that the, the Atlas points at, at, at high, at high transverse momentum, and our points at, at low transverse momentum, and they actually uh, reach each other <laughs> in a point. It's, it is a nice plot because it's a rare case in which they really join in one point, and we go low and they go high. Uh, so it is, uh, of course, so for depending on the type of process that you are interested in, it, it's, uh, uh, you, it's more important the low transverse momentum or the high transverse momentum part. Uh, and, but it's nice to see uh, how the experiments complement each other in that way. And uh, so, if we go to heavy ions. Uh, well, you know since, uh, since uh, uh, a long time that uh, we have me started measuring uh, global properties, that the volume is larger than it was measured at RIC, that the lifetime is longer, the energy density is, is larger. This is uh, one of the latest measurements, though, and this uh, was mentioned in the uh, question of the temperature. This is an important measurement uh, uh, also from the point of view just uh, of the uh, readiness and the effectiveness uh, of uh, the uh, experiments uh, at the LHC. I mean, I'm sure you have been shown by our uh, Atlas colleagues uh, how in a uh, matter of months or a year they obtained results that uh, at uh, uh, the Tevatron had taken a number of years to, 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 to be developed uh, and, and so on. I mean, it, it really means control over systematic errors and so on and so forth. This is a measurement that at least took 10 years. Uh, and this is out in a year uh, from the from this, uh, the, data, the relevant data taking. Uh, so it's it's impressive how the uh, LHC collaborations, all of them, uh, because this is really true uh, in, for all of these collaborations, uh, have uh, an immense uh, ability to to develop sophisticated analysis uh, in in a short time. This is really a, a, a new realm of of data analysis that has opened the, the LHC. So this is uh, the, the photon spectrum, and you have the part which comes from uh, the direct uh, uh, photon DNA low calculations. And then you see that, that in, the, in the low uh, transverse momentum part, you can fit this exponential excess uh, that uh, is linked to the, the, this thermal production. You, it's, it's a chromatography uh, uh, measurement in some sense. You are looking at the color of the light emitted by, by the plasma. And, uh, and you get a number which is of some 50% or 40% higher than what was the highest measure of the trick. Uh, this this uh, RIC number was uh, uh, actually recorded in the, in the uh, Guinness uh, as the highest temperature ever measured. I don't think we will record ours, but, uh, it, but it is a lot higher. <laughs> so this is actually at the moment the highest temperature ever measured by, uh, that you can define as a temperature. 
Uh, one uh, interesting uh, aspect is that uh, when you produce all the, so, so many particles, you also produce <coughs> as many antiparticles. And uh, in the hadronization process, you can produce uh, nuclei and antinuclei. Uh, and uh, there uh, you can actually have uh, uh, a, a, an inter very important handle on the way uh, quarks get together in the, for in the, in the hydronization phase to form, uh, to form high uh, baryonic uh, bu uh, bubbles uh, or, or, or droplets. In, uh, and uh, these, of course, uh, are measurements that are very important for uh, uh, studies like those who are carried uh, by the AMS experiment up in space. You know that AMS is, what is doing is looking for anti-nuclei in, uh, in the primary radiation from, the, from, the, uh, from space. And clearly, uh, it is important in that case to know how many you should expect from ordinary interactions. Our, our, ours, in that sense, are ordinary interactions uh, in order to have, uh, see if you, if you have an excess in some direction or not. And so it's, it's quite uh, interesting to have measurements of this sort. Also because uh, I'm, I'm very, very curious to see what will come out of the Alice upgrade when we will have, uh, uh, on, on this plot you can imagine uh, roughly uh, a thousand to ten, several thousand times more. And then uh, if uh, you follow exactly what, uh, what are uh, the, the predictions, the, the, the no standard predictions, uh, we, you should not, or you maybe at most uh, observe one anti-lithium. Yet, uh, the, this, the number for the anti-helium is a little high. So uh, some theorists have developed uh, predictions that follow that uh, little high and bend over, and so would have a, a, a modest depression instead of several orders of magnitude from the anti-helium to the anti-lithium. And it will be very curious to see what is, if we see a few anti-heliums, uh, anti-lithiums instead of <coughs> none or one. Um, what time is it? Because I, I'm not, I don't have a. You, you should wave at me when I'm. Yeah, uh, so, okay, but uh, scream at me when I'm. <clears throat> These are, for example, measurements of spectra of particles. These are, allow you to measure. Whoops. Uh, you can see if you compare proton-proton uh, 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 curves to the uh, ones produced in the ions, you see that they are uh, shifted and they are shifted uh, uh, in as a function of the mass, and that allows you to uh, me uh, calculate what is the uh, overall speed at which everything is flowing away, because that, of course, uh, moves your curves uh, in a mass-dependent way, uh, and, uh, and you get that uh, the, the beta of the, uh, of the collective flow uh, towards the outside of the system is, uh, is uh, two-thirds of the speed of light. And then you see that we get, you get many more baryons than, than uh, mesons, and that, uh, again, uh, is in part, uh, of course, an effect of what we have just seen, the fact that the, the baryons are pushed further, than, and, and therefore the, the ratios, uh, of course, change, but also that uh, you have uh, different statistical mechanisms in, in uh, the adronization process. Instead, in fragmentation, it's hard to make uh, a three work systems while in coalescence it's easy and so this is a handle you have uh, to, to distinguish the two. One thing which has been <coughs> very, uh, very, very interesting in recent times has been the studies of the flow patterns. Uh, this has become an entire uh, field of research uh, in which, by the way, there is, a, uh, there is even an institute in Germany where these two communities uh, work together uh, uh, in, in the one of uh, the ultra-cold atoms uh, and the one of the heavy ions to understand uh, these, uh, these uh, uh, issues linked to, to flow patterns. And um, these are picture, uh, pictures of the space-time evolution of the uh, a, a ultra cold uh, lithium atoms. And uh, you can, uh, essentially, the, the point is that you have uh, uh, symmetries and um, structures of different kinds. We'll see diff many different types of structures in the initial state. And then, uh, 
if the system would be a, a viscous system, all these structures which you have at the beginning would get washed out in, by, the, by the viscosity of the system. Uh, instead, if you, as has uh, as, uh, as been measured, you have a very low viscosity system, all these structures uh, leave a trace in what is the final state of the system, and therefore your measurements of the final state allow you to infer back uh, properties at the, at, the, uh, at the early stages. And there's been a lot of effort uh, in Alice on that uh, uh, studying, and of course also in, our, in, in the other LSE experiments, there's a beautiful uh, paper uh, from, uh, from uh, Atlas on the higher harmonics that uh, is, has become a reference in this specific field. So it's, uh, it's a very, very fascinating subject in which you uh, then, for example, but one of the things we do is to study it as a function of the different uh, study flow patterns uh, uh, with different uh, uh, identified particles so, so that then you constrain your hydrodynamic model with a number of different parameters to study its uh, space-time evolution and obtain the viscosity and other parameters of the system. And then you see, for example, that uh, uh, even fluctuations uh, in, the, in the early stages do uh, uh, leave a trace uh, in your uh, in your uh, system, and that uh, is uh, of course interesting because it uh, it allows to discriminate uh, uh, the the different models, but also because it has a really strong sensitivity to viscosity. And of course, uh, this uh, is not my slide. I, I, I uh, and I keep putting the, the author of it because uh, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, somehow a, a su suggestive idea. It's not, it's not that, a, that there is a, any, we are not able to do this yet, but uh, it is still suggestive, the fact that uh, there is an analogy between the measurement of uh, these patterns in the final state and their connection to the structures in the early state of your interaction and the similar thing that happens in the universe as a whole in which you have uh, that uh, global uh, uh, over structures of the system do re relate to uh, fluctuations and, and structures in the, in the early phase. And uh, as I say, um, it's an analogy at the moment. We cannot say that there is a, a, a link between these two, two approaches. Still, uh, it's, uh, it's very suggestive and uh, it, uh, it will be fantastic if someday there's people who start working on this, on, on connecting these two pictures, but it's, it's really not trivial. And, uh, and I don't know if it will ever succeed, but it is indeed very suggestive. <clears throat> the, the last thing you do is to, the another thing you do is to, you of course, do your rather for the experiment. I mean, you shoot something against this, uh, this uh, droplet uh, of, of strongly interacting matter and you try to see what, uh, what happens to it. And uh, the, what you do is to take a fast parton and you do what, you go and look what it does. And what you see, this is the, a classic uh, paper already, uh, or more than a year old, in which you uh, measure uh, the, uh, if so if the number of uh, hadrons of a certain transverse momentum uh, that you would expect from uh, uh, an extrapolation from proton-proton collisions uh, and uh, uh, multiplied by the number of collisions and what you actually observe. And what is normal is that at very low transverse momenta you are much lower because there uh, it is the number of participants and not the number of collisions that dominates the production, but so it's okay. And then you would, uh, you would have to go, and this is what happens in peripheral collisions, these uh, open circles, you go to close to one uh, in, at, at high transverse momenta. Instead, what you, what you get is a very strong depression of a factor of five or so of, of your, so these are uh, stopped. Uh, they lose their energy in the system. And now we have gone a long way from that. Uh, there are very detailed studies of the dependence uh, uh, of this uh, RAA, which is called this ratio of what you measure in collisions of two nuclei versus what you obtained from proton-proton multiplied by the number of collisions mm -hmm. uh, for different identified particles. Uh, to, uh, uh, and you see, the, for example, for the lambdas, the interplay between the baryon enhancement, which I was mentioning before, and the suppression. 
And uh, now we're starting to go to really details uh, and uh, trying to understand this is a very recent measurement. Oops. Uh, you go and look at uh, around the direction of a fast uh, pattern which identifies a jet, and you, you, all the particles which correlate to it, and you study the shape of this distribution and to uh, your <coughs> Surprise, you can see that in, this is a very narrow shape in proton-proton. Similarly narrow, you will see numerically the same in reality in, in avion peripheral collisions. And it gets broader in one direction, in the one of the, of the uh, in, in rapidity, uh, at, uh, for central collisions. And this actually is, uh, uh, so you, if you numerically look at it, uh, you see that there is a, a, a slow dependence uh, on, on a minimal dependence in, in phi and a strong dependence in, in eta. And actually that was predicted. There was a paper in 2004 which predicted that uh, there would be an interplay between the fragmentation and the flow that would drag the the particles along the along the uh, along rapidity, and so and uh, it's uh, it's interesting to see that that indeed gets uh, gets verified, and so there is an interplay of uh, uh, the flow patterns uh, and uh, and the object uh, structure. Also, if you remember this uh, uh, baryon anomaly. One thing that you want to go look is uh, what is the uh, population of uh, baryons versus mesons in the jet fragmentation region and around, uh, around it. And so this, uh, this is done here. And you see in the jet fragmentation region, if you, uh, you get, in fact, the same uh, baryon to meson ratio that you get in proton-proton, while is, as soon as you get away from the jet peak, you have uh, the, the baryon anomaly that we were uh, ob observing in, in the overall bulk production in the, in the jet. Now, at, uh, you, you go and look at uh, uh, heavy flavors, and you see that they also uh, are affected by this uh, energy loss. In fact, uh, one of the things that you uh, expect, wanted to see was how the uh, energy loss depends on the mass and on the flavor of your quark. And uh, you would have expected that uh, the, uh, for example, the array of the D would be higher than that of the, uh, of the, of the pion. And indeed, with the large errors uh, that we, we have, this uh, is uh, absurd. And uh, it is, though, much less evident than what one would have predicted from uh, calculations based on the ADS-CFT correspondence. There's also other measurements that uh, don't actually match too well with the ADS-CFT-based uh, 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 measurements. Another thing which is intriguing is that you would have ex expected if the, is this, uh, uh, these are not uh, fragmenting from the original uh, production stream, but they are created by coalescence in the system, like everything else, uh, that they would uh, flow and that they would uh, uh, have... Uh, a higher uh, probability to pick uh, a mass uh, quark. We know that the yes, quarks are uh, abundant uh, in the plasma, <coughs> and uh, then a, a, a URD. And uh, well, uh, we are now working really hard to reduce these errors. People, uh, people are uh, trying, and, and we have just already made them somewhat smaller, and also operating on the ratio, some of the errors cancel, and so you can get away. But it is clear that there is a, 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 a hint uh, of, of a significantly larger, larger uh, uh, pro oops, production or, uh, or lower suppression of the DS versus the, the other Ds. And uh, then you go and look at the flow patterns, and indeed uh, there is a uh, uh, statistically significant uh, uh, evidence of, uh, of a flow at, at uh, low PT. So, uh, in some sense, what is, could have been surprising at, at the beginning, uh, it seems that everything participates of this collectivity of, uh, <coughs> of the system, uh, even, uh, in, even the heavy quarks. And, uh, and uh, sure enough, uh, also the, the famous JSI, you remember certainly that this was one of the historic signals that were foreseen, uh, that uh, uh, CC bar pairs, rather than forming a resonance, would melt in the system. But then if you uh, remember that uh, uh, in, at the LHC, uh, the cross-section is very large for charm charms are 
start to become cheap, there's many charm quarks in each heavy ion collision, and so you can start producing J-size statistically uh, because you are picking other, other charm quarks in the system, and you, in fact, uh, what you start seeing is that, indeed, uh, there is, uh, versus the measurements at RIC, there is an increase, and in particular, an increase at low transverse momenta, and you can see here how that uh, is, can be interpreted in terms of uh, <coughs> the uh, effect of, uh, of uh, uh, recombi uh, recombination or regeneration from, from uh, the quarks in the system, uh, that uh, you have that, uh, in particular, this growth at low transverse momenta is well described uh, if you take into account recombination. And uh, that, of course, is an, is can, you can also look in a different way by looking at uh, the mean uh, transverse momentum of your, of your J-size in the heavy ions versus that of proton-proton, of, uh, uh, proton, in which you see that, uh, contrary to what you would expect in a in a picture of melting, in which, of course, the slower the J-Psi, the more you would melt, it would melt, and while the faster ones would have more chances to, to go out, you have a decrease <coughs> in, uh, of the uh, average PT at, uh, at high number of participants. And, well, it's not really a measurement, this, but uh, it's a hint. Uh, it's, it's a couple of sigmas of flow, even, of the, of the J-size. Uh, this is a, a, a cute uh, hors d'oeuvre of, of another measurement which we are doing in this moment in the central region. These are, uh, the, the, what I was telling you before, these collisions in which uh, you have a photonuclear production of, uh, of the J-size. And uh, uh, this, of course, uh, is then very sensitive to, to structural functions and to, to shadowing. And uh, uh, we have made, published this first point at forward rapidities, and uh, what is coming out now is a point here in, in the center, which of course, as you can imagine, is more uh, sensitive to, to, for models. And uh, of course, many other things. Uh, there are uh, uh, measurements on, on, on jets, uh, on uh, the uh, 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 production of, uh, of hadrons, what's called hydrochemistry in our lingo. Uh, full shape of the distribution of the uh, of a particle production, uh, effects of flow at high at high momenta for identified particles. And uh, this, this actually is a cute thing. Uh, we, we have an effect uh, which is curious, that is that there are uh, uh, too few protons uh, in certain, in, in certain uh, compared to uh, uh, the statistical model. And uh, this is a, a measurement that hints at uh, effects of annihilation. And, uh, and these are, the, uh, again, the behavior for, uh, of, of uh, identified particles and flow. But <clears throat> I want to spend two minutes on this because this is brand new. This is for last, from last week. Uh, these are the first results of the <coughs> proton nucleus. We, <coughs> they said, uh, the proton nucleus run is actually next year, <coughs> in January. And, but there was a test uh, a month ago in which the accelerator uh, started to have first collisions. And uh, what uh, uh, they gave us was uh, were a few hours, so these were about five hours of, <coughs> of collisions. So we took about a million events. <coughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm really out of voice. Uh, about a million events, and these are the first two papers uh, that have been, have been submitted. This is that uh, uh, RAA that I was telling you about. Um, <coughs> And uh, uh, you can see this is what is measured uh, in, in the heavy ions, uh, central collisions, peripheral collisions. And now what uh, you would expect uh, in proton nucleus? Well, you would expect something that uh, uh, goes if the effect in heavy ions is entirely due to the collectivity and the lab size and so on and so forth, it goes to about one. And indeed, that's exactly what, uh, what is measured. This sort of flattens at, at, uh, at uh, uh, almost exactly one. It goes a little bit over one. It's a Cronin effect in this, in this region and then flattens out. 
And so you can now say that uh, uh, indeed uh, what you measure in the ions is uh, not an initial state effect, it's not an effect of different structural functions, but it is uh, a, an effect uh, of the collective uh, behavior of the system. And this, I'm sorry I took from the paper, so this is not very good quality, this, uh, this picture. Uh, and this is the rapidity distribution of, uh, of charged particles. And, uh, this is also uh, already very interesting because one of the things that you want to understand is, uh, in, in proton nucleus collisions uh, at these energies is are the effects of uh, shadowing versus uh, uh, or uh, together with uh, the so-called saturation effects uh, in, that have been advocated as a necessary ingredient to describe the data at RIC. And what we see here, well, is that uh, at the moment, uh, all the models you have here, very many models, so what I'll just guide you through what is, uh, we consider relevant, is that uh, the ballpark of the number is uh, more or less obtained from, from many of the, of the models, unless those who don't include shadowing, which are very far, but those are not much realistic, but the asymmetry between the proton side and the, the uh, nucleus side is uh, very different from what uh, <coughs> some of the models, in particular the models uh, that uh, include uh, uh, saturation effects, because they have include saturation on both the proton and, uh, and uh, the nucleus, and therefore they depend depress more than what we measure, the proton versus, versus the nucleus, we see a much more symmetric uh, picture. Uh, last but not least, uh, we are looking at the future. I have very few minutes, so I will not bug you too much. We uh, presented our uh, letters of, of intent for the uh, future of Alice uh, recently, and we uh, target for that uh, the Longshan Town 2, not the Longshan Town 3, which is in, in, in a few years, six years from now. Uh, what we, in, in, in one sentence, what we want to do is to operate Alice at high rate while preserving its uniqueness, which is the particle identification and the <coughs> low transverse momentum capabilities, and in particular enhance the secondary vertex capability and the tracking at low PT. And that to address what? To address uh, uh, three main uh, physics subjects. So the uh, heavy flavor transport uh, pra parameters and andronization parameters. Uh, so a, a much more detailed uh, measurement of uh, uh, heavy, heavy flavor mesons and baryons. The measurement of uh, uh, and low mass and low PT dielectrons, which are a, a way to address uh, uh, chiral symmetry restoration and photons production from the, from the GP, and uh, <coughs> the quarconia, um, uh, especially uh, going down to, to zero transverse momentum to really understand uh, what we now see as hints uh, in, in detail. And of course, as byproduct, uh, you will also get a better understanding uh, for, uh, for jets. Uh, uh, of course, are done uh, in, in a different way and uh, very efficiently by the Atlas and CMS experiments and heavy nuclear states, as I was saying, uh, <coughs> going up to uh, uh, with the study of hypernuclei, start trying to study uh, lambda and bound states and so on. So in, in one uh, plot here you have to, what you gain on, on a number of these, uh, these uh, observables and you go in many cases uh, to, uh, in, enormously down with the errors and, you, and in particular also you extend to lower transverse momenta. <coughs> Oops. And so this is the timeline. We hope to, to be ready in 2018 with the new, with the new apparatus and uh, uh, to install it during this period. So we had a very busy summer. There was a, a, in a, a working group set up with Atlas and CMS colleagues to really establish the complementarity of the measurements and so on. We had a town meeting of the entire Avion community, which was very important for us because it was really a moment uh, of uh, <coughs> to, to see the, the coherence of our plans for the various in the various projects. We included also not only the various LHC experiments, but also people working at uh, the low energy facilities and the American group. Work, Americans working at RIC, and the conclusions 
which were submitted to, to the Krakow meeting was that the top priority for future quark matter research in Europe is the full exploitation <coughs> of the physics potential of colliding the ions in the late sea, and then it continues uh, stressing the importance of the ions upgrade and so on. And also the nuclear physics community as such, uh, as a whole, submitted a, a document to this Krakow meeting in which it was uh, stating uh, the importance uh, for the nuclear physics community in Europe uh, to, uh, of the Alice Long Term uh, programs, which again were indicated as a top priority for nuclear European uh, physics. And uh, as you know, there's been a, a European strategy meeting recently in Krakow where the ion physics was indicated as an integral part of the LAC program until the mid-2020s. And this is the, has been the response of the LACC uh, that, uh, uh, in the end, uh, endorses the LAC collaboration. And, therefore we are, and this is, of course, for us a very, very important uh, event because it means that we are looking forward to a long-term future. So what happens now? Uh, we will have uh, uh, a discussion with the funding agencies uh, in, uh, uh, in a few days, next week. Uh, and then in a year from now, we will produce uh, a technical design reports, which are also the moment in which people uh, will have to define commitments for construction and funding and so on. And of course, in the meantime, we continue with vigorous R&D. And uh, we will have to decide on the various uh, other uh, programs that are included in there. Uh, so I want to conclude now with a, a short uh, uh, comment on the fact that, uh, uh, as it has been for the construction and uh, the design and then the construction of Alice uh, at its time, uh, the, uh, our Czech colleagues are now playing a very important role in the definition and in the development uh, for, for the upgrade. There, are, uh, there is a participation in the uh, ITS upgrade and one in the uh, proposed focal project, which is a forward calorimeter to be added uh, in, in the forward region for... <coughs> sorry. Uh, and uh, this is then, uh, of course, uh, an important uh, uh, ingredient to our, to really to the development of the plants. As usual, our Czech colleagues are not joining at some point. They are developing the designs from the start. And uh, just to flash, these are uh, when, uh, the, the uh, technical developments for the, for the ITS, in which they are studying the single event upset uh, uh, in, uh, in effects uh, in, the, uh, uh, in the pixel chip that we will be using, and this is uh, the uh, instrumentation for the irradiation which are set up uh, at the cyclotron here. So this is, uh, this is very nice. So it's a very exciting time for us. Uh, the, there are lots of scientific results. Uh, there are more that are coming. P and the PA run is about to start, and uh, there is uh, a, a a lively and growing collaboration, and with even wider horizons for the future. And we say that uh, the Czech participation in Alice is, is great, is very important, is very valuable. There's been a substantial contribution to the detector, an important contribution to the computing, there's a strong presence in, in the physics, and there is now a major role in the upgrade program. And so we have a bright future ahead for both Alice and the Czech Republic. <laughs> Sorry, the voice is, my voice is going... Uh, Paolo, thank you very much for your very interesting uh, talk. And now it's time for questions, please. Which so, I can also answer at dinner. <laughs> if there are my, no more my questions... Voice, uh, my voice is And gone. Paolo is exhausted with his mm. voice, so, so I would like to thank you uh, <laughs> once more. <laughs> And before we conclude this session, I will give floor to Yuji. So on behalf of the organizing symposium, I would like to thank all the speakers for their talks, you for coming, and the technical personnel for the help in arranging sessions. So the question is closed. See you in the bush. Thank you.